Hey folks, Danny here at Parte. So today we're going to uh, be displaying some information around the roll technique, uh, trying to get down to the bottom line as to what happened with silence application. Uh, the As of the time of me recording this video, we have figured it out. This video did not have that information captured. Uh, I'll be doing a follow-up. Uh, so in that follow-up, uh, we'll be rolling a number of different attempts that show you uh, exactly how that happened. But for the purposes of this, what I was going to do is do this front panel in a couple of sections. I'm going to do one side uh, the way that I would normally just do it, like the way that I do it here, every panel that I roll. And, and folks, I can tell you, I have literally, on these new formulas, literally rolled hundreds of panels. Um, just different techniques, things like that. But the one thing that happened is the one thing that I already knew about the product. Um, and just it doesn't happen whenever I roll because I guess I know that, right? And one of the things we're going to want to do is make sure that we make our application information a little more robust <clears throat> so that we can cover off. But like I said, on this one, I'm just using a, you know, standard quarter inch, uh, a nine inch long quarter inch thick nap roller. And doing just back and forth. Now, there's a couple of things that folks are going to need to keep in mind. I'm not really going to cover that so much here. I'll, I'll touch on it, but I'm, I'm going to do a follow up video where I'm going to roll um, the current Lambertian form. Uh, Vega Plus that I have on the motorized screen. I'm going to be taking it down and I'm going to be rolling uh, the motorized screen with the original Vega Plus, the specular version. But there'll be a couple of tips that I'm going to show along the way and I'll show you one now. You can see the tape there. So what you want to do whenever you, you uh, apply this is you're going to want to roll much in the way uh, those folks who are familiar with HVLP spraying, how you want to come onto the material and then back off of the material, right? Or your, your, your substrate, whatever you're painting. You want to come onto it and off of it. You don't want to start on the edge and then end right at the, ed the other edge uh, because you'll end up with dry spots. Uh, it's just the sprayer is going to atomize right there more than it's going to do as you wash across the screen typically. So you'll end up with some texture differences on your edges. So same thing here. Uh, this rolls, this, this material is not a paint, does not include any paint in it whatsoever. Uh, that's not so much of a, of a brag or anything. It's just to say it doesn't apply the same as a paint. It's very easy to apply but you can apply it the same way. So you see, I'm just doing little like touch points there. All right, I'm just hitting it, rolling a little section, rolling a little section. I'm gonna go here in just a second, I'm gonna put some little finger marks in it. <clears throat> All right, and then we'll let that dry and we're gonna paint over those finger marks and I'll show you all that stuff that's all here in the video. But just to show you that, you know, even things like that, really are not going to impact your application. The only one thing that we found that would impact your application is the one thing that appears to have happened to silent. So uh, once again, we'll be addressing that. But you can see here, I'm going to show you how I come onto the material. And I'm also showing you where I made the finger marks there, right? And you can also see like it's not completely even. It, you, it's, it's spread out and evenly wet. Upon the screen. If you go back to the original application video, one of the things that we highlight is that it people tend, and I say people because when we were going through our test rolls, our test phases way back months ago, um, we we pulled in uh, numerous members of the family to help us to test this out, just to get different roles, right, different role techniques. And with the key point that was being made is that you want to keep your screen wet, but you don't want to apply this like you would apply a paint, right? You want to follow the instructions uh, because this isn't a paint and you can't just start like 
you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff um, with your roller and not expect that there's going to be some degree of, uh, you know, texture that you may leave behind if you get all crazy. Now, even with that, and I'm going to show you in this video because we're going to do a bit of that. Uh, but you'll see it still doesn't, um, it still doesn't leave any of the, the texture nor the, that sort of matted area that you see in the screen from silence video and there's a reason for that um you know the key here and you'll notice i'm going off of the the tape onto the tape on the other side right and then lifting up i'm not lifting up on the screen because i want a good even texture across the whole screen so when you lift up keep in mind this is a plastic so as you lift up if you too dry on your roller, you're going to leave a mark there. It's actually going to, the mark is going to be just a matted area. So it's going to be very matte compared to the rest of it just because you picked your roller up. So you want to roll onto your, onto your material and off of your material. Now this right here is showing after it's dried. And you can see it's not even, right? It's not an even color distribution. Not the point. The four layers will take care of the color distribution. What you're doing is just making sure you get an even coat of the material onto your screen. And that's really all you're shooting for here. You're not trying to be an artistic uh, painter of any sort. You're not trying to paint someone's wall. You're not trying to squeeze the roller to try to get as, you know, try to get that last little bit out. Uh, that is not what you want to do with this. This is a plastic material. So it cannot be painted exactly the same as you would paint with a roller. And the reason I say that is like if you think of any of you guys who've ever painted your wall. When you paint your wall, um, a lot of times, you know, you start painting over in the section. You've got a loaded roller and you're rolling. And then you go over to the left or the right a bit and your roller starts running out of paint. And you're trying to squeeze that roller to get a, a little more out of it, right? You don't want to do that with this. Okay, this once again, not a paint. And the point is not to try to get a uniform color on the first two rolls. You're just going to make sure that you get even coats across the screen. You want to make sure that the material is wet on the screen, right? You don't roll any dry areas, which is um, no doubt where uh, silence issues stem from. Uh, because when I saw the, the, the video, and you could see on the right hand side whenever you got up close those marks are marks from the roller being dry and then you coat over it with another coat and that's just going to show up as a matted area underneath the top coat so it's going to look darker uh, because it is more matte but here you can see we did the full roll um, now, this is just how I typically roll on these, right? Four coats, just <clears throat> up and down, uh, making sure that you get the full surface. And there you can see it's flipped over. You can see it's dry. Um, and we'll come back and, and show you on this one. So, uh, actually, I think I was trying to record the stages as it was drying. And then uh, I'm going to put a... You know, at the end, I'm going to mark this with a one. That'll be our first one. And that's the baseline. And then next to it, I'm going to start painting another side. But this one, I'm going to do very thin. Very thin coats, not dry, okay? Not, not dry, but just very thin coats. Now, as you can see on the other side, I've already put a base coat. The reason for that is because this is very thin, fine PVC material. It does have a texture to it. It's actually roller shade material. But whenever you go to apply this directly to it, right, typically I would always use a black flat on, on all of the screens that I make. I use, I use black flat as the underlay. So typically what I would do is paint a coat of black flat on this, and it'll cover it pretty well. But this material, it wants to bead. So you can see like little areas where it's wanting to bead up um, and separate from the material. Now what I'm showing you right there is the center area where I've got a little more texture on the edge from the edge of the roller. 
and I'm going to show you that that's key because as much texture is there, I'm going to show you what happens whenever I coat over it. So if you think about it, and you'll see I'm doing thinner coats on this, but that center line, you're going to end up with eight layers across the center because I'm going to overlap that. Uh, and we'll show you, you know, even with eight layers across this, the texture is still not prohibitive of giving you a good image. It's got more texture to it there and, it, and you would expect it to. And actually this one was rolled intentionally to put more texture on that center line. Uh, but what you would be able to see is that my number one roll, the one to the right, is going to be one approach this one's going to be thinner and at the end you'll be able to see you know across the surface that it is a thinner roll that has uh, more fine texture than uh, the panel piece on the, or the, the right side and that's just showing it it drying again See, and I go back to, this is where, you know, folks look at this and they would think, well, now I need to get it even. And that's not the point with this material. The, the material over the, the coats that you're going to put on it will even. The color will even out. Um, that's not the point. What you're trying to do here, once again, is just get, you know, thin coats. This is a very thin mix. It leaves uh, almost like a skin. And I'm going to show you that when we get to the texture of the screen. I'm going to show you just how this actually grabs on to the texture of the screen. See, paints, if you use paints um, for, especially as a primer, uh, paint has a lot of particle and a lot of tint powder in it. So if you've got, let's say, a light texture on a surface and you're looking to smooth that texture out, a couple of coats of good primer paint can do that. This material, okay, the Parte formulas, will never do that. Okay, they're not designed to do that. They're designed to leave very skin-like thin layers on the surface. So if you're going to paint a surface, you want to make sure that you're painting a surface that has very low texture. Okay, you can have some texture, that's fine. But it needs to be a very fine texture. If it's not, if you've got, like I say, a screen you've painted, you know, two or three different times with different types of coatings, and it's got a bumpy texture to it. What I'm showing you right here is the bubbles that will actually appear much like in a resin <laughs> whenever you would apply a resin. But uh, the bubbles, that's the bubbles escaping from the material. That's the reason you let it set for a couple of minutes. And you can see this drying and you can see how fine the texture is on the surface. Now this one I'm rolling thin so you would expect it to be, you know, fine on the surface. But you see the other side, it's very, very close, almost exactly as fine. And then we're going to, in a minute, we're going to flip this over and we're going to put some, some sloppy, soupy coats on. And we're going to show you what happens there. Now you can see along that ridge line, there's more texture. And that's because, once again, you've got eight coats that are rolled up, you know, across that line. When you start getting to that many coats, there's obviously, especially whenever you're using a textured roller, there's going to be some texture that's going to be left behind. See, once again, just a small amount of the material. And we're just going to spread that then across the surface as the final roll for that side. making sure now right now I'm just trying to thin it out get it across the surface and then we're going to go back and we're going to do our rolls there you go from the end to the other end and lift off on the tape and that's just thinning out your surface that's it now you don't want to overdo that because the more you roll like that, the drier your roller is going to get. And I think that's what occurred to, uh, to Silent. Uh, we'll verify that through some test rolls. Like I said, I'll do a follow-up. But I think what happened is that in his, 
his attempt to do the best job that he could because that's you know we've communicated back and forth and he was really wanting to do uh, you know the coding justice and but but unfortunately uh, the intent here led to overwork and that's the one sin you want to stay away from with this material is overworking it it's not designed to be worked like that that's more once again a pain you can work paint that way. If you if you run into an area where you're dry and you, you leave off, right? And you you can even step away and let that dry, come back with the paint roller and pick up where you left off. And a lot of times you may notice it if you're really looking for it, but typically you're not looking for it, right? Because you're painting a wall. But this is very different. This is something where your eyes are constantly on it. So you want to make sure that you don't overwork the material and you let the material do what it's designed to do. And you can see that. So you can see the wash is, the color is uniform across the panel. Uh, you can see that we've got a little more texture along that ridge line where we overlap the material. You can see that there. It looks like almost kind of like a, you know, a parallel lines running up and down the screen. Uh, but then you look on the on both sides opposite of that and your your sheen is Your sheen's great. Your texture is great. Everything's great. So we're gonna label that one number two. That is the thin roll So you have number one, which is how I typically roll it number two Which was rolled thin and I'm just keeping some putting some dots on that uh, Center line so that whenever we go to to do the display, I can show you what the texture looks like, you know, under the projector. <clears throat> All right. And so now we're just going to remove our tape here and get all of this up. <clears throat> I'm just kind of making sure the lines are big enough to be able to be seen. So we're going to remove our tape, we're going to flip this panel over, and then we're going to do thick roll. No major organized way. We're just going to, to take our quarter inch snap roller, and we're just going to put a bunch of material on the other side, and we're going to slop it around and just kind of do a, a quick roll and see what we end up that way. All right, so now we're going to give you an idea. You can see in the light here just how low the texture is. Most of the texture that you're seeing is the texture of the material that we rolled it onto, and it's just a thin skin overlay. And once again, we're going to show you that when we get to the screen. Um, one of the motorized screens that I've uh, coated it on has a texture on the screen surface. So uh, we're going to drill in and show you just how this really adheres to that texture. It doesn't fill it in. It isn't like it smooths it out. That's not the purpose of this. So this is going to cling to whatever texture you have. So you want to make sure that your whatever surface you're painting this on has a very low texture. Okay. I would not recommend painting over screens that have been previously painted unless you thin out the texture on the surface with a primer. But there's the full sheet. You can see it looks like one solid sheet, but rolled two different sections and two different ways. And I'm going to show you here real quick so you can see the material. Let's put it up so you can see that there's no... No Mars. Now that's the Lambertian that I keep over to the right. You can see the difference in the way that they're reflecting light. And you can see drilling into the Lambertian, you can see that there's very minimal texture. We're gonna we're gonna drill in, but you can also see there the uh, the pixels. We'll drill in so that you can actually see the pixel pattern in the material. Sort of evidencing how low texture this is. Right there we go. So it's just a matter of being able to drill in. Now you you know you've got warbles and things like that because this material isn't tensioned. Uh, it would need to be stretched and tensioned, but there's no marring. There's no 
anything. And so what we'll do is we'll just give you the display here. Once again, you're looking at a uh, specular screen against a Lambertian screen. So the big screens, the Lambertian screen, the small panel we just painted is specular. But once again, getting in so you can see the pixelation. And see there's no dark spots or anything like that other than from the baffling in the material. And that's just because once again, the material's not tensioned. You can also notice a difference uh, here in a second. I'll show you just kind of between the Lambertian and the the specular part of the screen. Now that would be a lot more prominent and I think it is a lot more prominent if I remember from uh, the display that's going to come up uh, before the end of the video where I use a long throw and you can definitely tell a, a much larger difference. The long throw looks a little more matted on the Lambertian screen which is to be expected. That's exactly what it should do. Um, because the Lambertian screen is actually designed to work with ultra short throws. I'm just showing some different scenes here and showing you where there's not really a lot of speculation. And once again, I'm using an ultra short throw at the moment, the Xiaomi Mija 1600 lumen projector uh, will move and because I think it's key to see it under both uh, ultra short throw and long throw. Now I haven't really highlighted a lot of it, but what you notice is you're not noticing a lot of, well, any real difference there on that center line where we overlap. So you're not seeing any kind of prominent line that stands up. If you get up close, you can notice a little more texture in that area just because, you know, we, we've got eight coats there as opposed to four on the other side. Uh, but you'll notice from a visual standpoint, you, you don't notice anything. And I can see the dots. There's where your line is. And there's where you can get in and see the pixel. See, you can notice there's just a little more texture there. But nothing significant. Essentially, the material just needs to be tensioned. Um, having the material tensioned that way is going to go a long way in giving you the, the smooth finish that you want. <clears throat> All right, so here is where I'm showing you the actual texture on the material, the screen itself. If you look to the left, you can see the pattern on that material. And then if you look here, we're just kind of going in, you're seeing that the, the formula just coats and pretty much just attaches itself like a fine skin to that same texture. You, you see the texture from the side matching the texture where the, the screen's been painted. And so if this added like a lot of texture, you would see that here because you would see a lot of that texture filled in. Uh, you may see little pockets of it, but you know, in most of the areas you would expect to see that filled in, but you're not seeing that because that's not how this material dries. Okay, it dries once again, a very fine, thin skin. And we haven't done the sloppy 
back part yet, but we're going to get to that. When we do, you're going to see it, it does pretty close. It's a little thicker, uh, but it, it's not far off from what you're looking at here. Once again, showing you just a Lambertian pattern versus, um, you know, how it looks against uh, the actual screen. Pixels again, you can see the pixel pattern there. All right. So now we're going to go back into the kitchen and we're going to, I did the base coat on this uh, just to get a base coat on it. And that's primarily just so the, the material, because it's PVC, it won't beat up on me. So this would be basically if you were looking to uh, put your, your primer on, this would be that primer coat. And that's really all I'm doing here is just trying to get a coat on uh, so that it dries and we're able to, to start you know the the true material coating and you can see here where it wants to bead that's where just a it's it's a it's a smooth plastic it's not like it's got some special coating on the outside you hear about it's it's just a smooth plastic and the material doesn't always want to stick to it so now on this i'm going to add more material and we're going to increasingly um, more on this one and then we're going to use so this is more material than what you would need for this little piece of, of, um, of material. And you're gonna see, I'm just kind of moving the material around, just trying to make sure that we get the whole screen wet. I'm not even really putting any pressure down. I'm just kind of making sure that we get it in that little box area. I'm doing side rolls, which is not something you should really do with this material other than just moving the material around. Once you get into your roll technique, you want to stay straight, you know, bottom to top. And so that's it. I'm not even going to do the pressure rolls. I'm not going to do the here, let's smooth everything out rolls. I'm just going to, you know, get the material spread across the screen and just leave it be. See there, put my roller up and then we'll let that dry, come back. And we're going to do another soupy roll. All right, so that dried. So now we're going to come back again. Once again, do a soupy roll. Um, we're going to put more material down. So this is just to emulate if you were to use too much material, right? For the screen size and bear in mind on our application instructions and on our website we have exactly how much you are to use based upon the screen size that you're going to coat so it'll tell you how much to use per coat so you see this is more soupy my rollers already loaded so all I'm doing is just kind of moving it around just trying to fill in the, the box that I painted on the initials Yeah, I just touched that little bottom part where I'd missed. You're seeing, I, I didn't even finish this roll out. All I did was just got the material moved across the screen. And I'm going to be setting down my roller and closing up everything and letting this pat this uh this coat dry. Now you can see where you're getting sort of an orange peel texture there because it's so thick and it's starting to dry out. But we're going to show you whenever it finishes how most of that will dissipate. I'm showing you so you can see you've got less bubbles here. Uh, you don't see the bubbling that you saw on the other screens and it's just because we haven't really applied any pressure. All we did was just kind of get some material on the screen and let it set there. Now that's dry. And in a minute here, I'll be just kind of drilling in a little bit. I'm just putting a three on that one. So that's the third, third way. So we had the first way, which is the way that I typically roll it. Second way, which was 
a you know, much thinner roll and then this is the third okay and this was rolled very thick and look while it does have more texture than the first two it's still not heavily textured by comparison to some paints that I've seen and this once again we're not even trying just basically got the material on there and spread it across the top of the surface we didn't thin it out or anything and you know it's still you don't have any kind of subsurface issues you don't have any dry marks you don't have what well, you know doing a soupy roll you're not going to have dry marks uh, but you don't have any wonky textures or pools underneath that you know are darker than the than the top things like that things you could expect even with a paint not <laughs> even using flat paint i've seen people make some really bad mistakes with flat paint so the point of this is just to show you that there's a number of different ways that this could be conducted, but the key is that you don't let the screen, um, you don't let your brush, your roller, get dry. You can't squeeze out like excess paint trying to get the last little bit out of it and then go back and do your roller, which is one reason why we, we don't really recommend that you use a roll pan um, because if you use a roll pan, you're going to want to paint it like you paint a paint right on a wall you don't want to do that you want to follow the application steps but here we go and you can see the only patterns that you're seeing there are the the roller shade panel the substrate uh just uh you know just a little uh indentations that it had in it but once again we can get you in you can see the pixelation you can see that there's nothing you know there's no marring or matting or any kind of crazy reflections or anything like that that are happening due to texture it's actually for the way that this was painted it it dried a lot smoother than i expected uh, because i haven't really gooped it on that way and if i did i usually tried to roll it out um, so it was just a way to say look if you add too much here you can roll it out um, but in this case, once again, you know, just got the material pretty much on the screen. Just moved it around to make sure we got it in the block there. And never, never smoothed it out. Never tried to roll it out. Um, and you can see that, you know, even with this, the results are pretty great. Considering there was no, not much work put in. Here's your pixel, as well as the, you can see the structure of the actual uh, screen there. The texture structure on the screen is a block texture. over to the other side so you can see the same you can see that the, the pixels as well as the block texture of the actual screen and then I'm going to move over to the panel here and you'll see there's the pixels now you don't see the block texture of the screen because it doesn't exist on the you know the PVC material I painted this on here on the screen you can see more of the block texture of the actual screen there and here you're just looking at pixels and that's just to show you know if you had a heavy texture if you had uh, any kind of marring or anything like that and I say marring like any kind of you know flaws that you could see within the code or something it's going to show up you know whenever you drill into the pixel and here i'm just showing you again once again you know there's the texture on the side of the actual screen and you can see that texture uh everywhere we've rolled you see that same texture so that it's just a result of it clinging as a thin skin type scenario to the texture now i had someone reach out to me and ask me you know uh have we shown 
uh, roll-up screens, you know, motorized screens, and we have. Um, we, you know, the demonstrations that we've shown have pretty much all been on motorized screens. That's going to be changing. Uh, this was just to address that. But you can see it rolls up fine. But there's also another component here. So uh, I'll show you here in just a second. But the screen, this screen has been rolled up, rolled down numerous, numerous, numerous times. Uh, either just from us using it here because you know we've had uh, my nieces and stuff over here and had it down uh, we had a Christmas gathering <laughs> in March uh, because the family so much had happened with the family that it was the first opportunity we had had a chance to get together so we had Christmas in March had this down so you see it goes up it goes down it's fine uh, there's no issues whatsoever especially considering what I'm about to show you here We're going to get into that, lift this up and show you that this is actually a double-sided screen. Vega is on this side you're seeing now. That's the, the Vega specular version. And then the, what you're looking at here is the Vega Plus Lamberson version, which we're going to be coding over with the Lamp, uh, Vega Plus specular version in the next couple of days. And I'm going to use that video. To really hone in and break down things you want to avoid as a part of application uh, that will give you a, a fantastic result at the end. You know, my, my heartbreak in any of that was that, that it happened to Silent. So stay tuned and uh, I'm going to have some more test demonstrations and we're going to uh, work towards confirming what we believe happened with Silent. But uh, got more coming up, so hold tight.